It is suddenly thousands of years into the future. A man in a bright red spacesuit climbs down from his gleaming spaceship and steps foot onto foreign ground. Welcome, welcome, Earthman, a crowd cheers, as he is greeted by a mass of orange and blue robots on this planet called Cybrenia. Years before, humans placed a small handful of robots on this planet to see how they would develop and survive. This Earth survive. This Earthman named Tarleton has now arrived to inspect and decide whether or not the society it has fostered is ready to be integrated into Earth's human civilization. One of the orange robots takes Tarleton on a lengthy tour through the city in an attempt to showcase the development and success of Cyberenia's robot population. Speeding through the gleaming Capitol buildings, Tarleton becomes impressed. Not only have the robots mastered innovative engineering, but they have also have developed a democratic government. It is not until the ardent orange robot invites the Earthman to inspect the assembly plant that he notices a peculiarity. I see only orange workers. What about the blue robots? Tarleton inquires. The confused orange robot responds by explaining that only the orange robots are created here. The blue robots are assembled in their own plant on the other side of town. Hiding his concern, Tarleton dismisses the subject and the tour of the assembly plant continues. As his guide concludes his explanation of the creation process and they exit the building, Tarleton asks his companion where the blue plant is located and to take him there immediately. It is in Blue Town on the south side of the city, the robot replies, and he suggests that they take a bus. They arrive at a bus stop, clearly separated into a blue section and an orange section, and Tarleton asks his companion whether the robots of Cybrenia differentiate between blue and orange robots. Of course, the tour guide exclaims, otherwise there'd be trouble. We have to keep them in their place, you know. This statement begins to worry Tarleton, and he begins to notice just how separated the blue and orange robots really are. The bus, for instance, is separated into a clearly labeled orange section in the front and a blue section in the rear. Moreover, the charging station, the human equivalent of a restaurant, just outside the window has a large sign stating orange only. Soon enough, the bus arrives in a smaller, much smaller, and less shiny section of the city. Blue robots crowd the streets and the buildings appear run down, a sharp contrast from the gleaming square they were just in. Moving through building, both Tarleton and his orange guide see that every step of the blue robot creation process is identical to the orange robot's production. The only difference being a blue shield is attached to the outside instead of orange. The sheathings are only outside coverings, Tarleton explains to the orange machine. The inside structures are no different than yours. Baffled, the orange robot tries to retort that the outer shell does indeed make a difference. The blue robot goes on to explain how in Cybrenia's society, their blue sheathings cause them to be limited to menial jobs. Sent to the back of the bus, forced to go to different recharging stations, and live in a special section of the city. In return, the orange robot explains that it is not his fault. The social barriers between the blue and orange robots exist far before he was created, so there is very little he can do about them. Hearing these words, Tarleton decides that Cybrenia is not ready to join the Great Galactic Republic. He storms out of the assembly plant with his orange companion running frantically behind him and starts back towards his ship. Why, Tarleton? Why aren't we ready? The bot cries after him. Tarleton explains to him that he and the robots of Cybrenia must look inside themselves for the answer to that question. He assures his orange companion that there was also a time like this on Earth, where there seemed to be no hope, but once mankind on Earth learned to live together, real progress first began. Tarleton climbed back into his shining silver spaceship and waved goodbye to the land of Cybrenia. Within seconds, his aircraft was soaring into the infinite void of space, and he takes off his space helmet and shakes his head and allows the beads of perspiration on his dark skin to twinkle like distant stars. Now, of course, the story of Judgment Day was published in 1953, was during a time of discrimination against African Americans, which is still quite prominent today. 
uh, you know, it's sort of, uh, the plot is just telling, you know, scrutinized, uh, uh, segregated society, you know, they're separated and it features a black astronaut. And this goes against many of the core beliefs of people at the time. And, uh, you know, it gave the Comics Code Authority the perfect excuse to drive the publisher Bill Gaines out of business, who ran EC Comics. And, uh, you know, they even, like, would ask him to do certain things, like they need to take the beads of sweat off the African-American, uh, you know, human at the end of the story. And it's little shit like this that, you know, is our past and our history but the reason why I love this story so much is that because Gaines was able to draw a line with comic books and say, you know, I want to tell this story clearly. It's a little on the nose by today's standards. But back then, I'm sure, you know, it was new and fresh and exciting and it pissed people the fuck off. And uh, I'm kind of OK with all those things because you know, it's such a special place in my heart when I was reading it that I actually didn't expect the astronaut to be black. And, uh, you know, just the whole story kind of blew me away. And it's just so on the nose that if humanity just got along, we would succeed so much. You know, we would get so much done into the future. And, um, yeah, I just really love this story. And it's called Judgment Day and it's by EC Comics. Um, something I would suggest for anyone is to go get the best of entertaining comic stories, the artisan edition. I have already kind of went through it briefly on this channel. It is by far the best artisan edition with the inking included on it. Everything about it is just absolutely breathtaking and beautiful. But thanks everyone for being here today for this little story, this little episode. I'm still learning how to do editing on this new software. As you can see, my transitions have been quite updated and a bunch of other things. But there's some big episodes coming that I'm working on. So please just hang in there with me until we get those out. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.